they come from? Well, the King James Bible, which I'm a Bible minister, and I believe in the Bible, and as I look through the King James, the King James Bible never, not once, uses the term demons. Why is that? The King James Bible always calls them devils or unclean spirits. And there's a reason for that, because the ancient Greeks used to believe that there were good demons and there were bad demons. And the Greeks would seek after the good demons to, to be their guide in knowledge and wisdom, and they wanted to learn from what they called the good demons. And they sought to avoid and stay away from the bad demons. Well, there's no such thing as a good demon, and after this study from the Bible, you'll see that all demons are evil, evil entities. There's no such thing as a good demon. Now, as a 40-year-old person, I think I've only heard a, a message on this topic one time in my life. And I know there's a lot of confusion over this. And the old saying is, know the enemy. You need to know the enemy. If you join the military, the first thing they do is they show you what enemy tanks look like, and enemy airplanes, and enemy aircraft, and enemy ships. And so you know, okay, that's the enemy. Well, that's what we need to do as Christians, as we study the Bible, find out, okay, there is an enemy. Who is that enemy? Let's identify it. And then we'll know to, to preach against it and stay away from it. So the King James Bible never uses the term demon. It's always called devils. And the term devils appears 55 times, 48 verses in the King James Bible. The word devil appears 61 times in 57 verses. The words unclean spirit appear 26 times in 13 verses, and unclean spirits, a plural, appears 20 times in 10 verses. So the Bible certainly has a lot to say about demons, but the Bible doesn't have much to say about where they come from. And that's what we want to look at today, is where the demons come from. It's so interesting that in the Bible it talks about them, but it never tells you who they are or where they come from, except for they're evil, stay away from them, and they want to torment and do evil toward other people. So where do demons come from? This will take us on a wild, wild Bible study. But hang in there. This is something that I'd like you to learn so at least you know who the enemy is. These last days of the church in which we live, there's a, a, a rise, almost you could almost call it a revival, of Luciferianism, of witchcraft, of Satanism. And all over America and the rest of the world, there are more and more people that choose to follow Satan rather than follow Jesus Christ. And by so doing, they're giving heed, as the Bible says, to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So in the last days, the Bible tells us there will be a great rise of demonism and demonology. And many people who use the King James Bible, myself included, don't realize that even King James wrote a book on demonology. And he approached it from the, the way that he, he talked a lot about witchcraft. And certainly, people that practice witchcraft, whether they know it or not, are working with demons. Because demons are behind witchcraft. So let's look at this. What is a demon? Where does it come from? There are actually three theories of where demons come from and what they are. So we're going to look at those three theories. We're going to go through the Bible and study the Bible and see exactly what the Bible says about what demons are and where they come from. Well, the first theory is that they are only fallen angels and that the demons are the fallen angels. We're going to look at the verses that do talk about what are the fallen angels. The next theory is that demons are the fallen angels that left, so I'm going to just abbreviate, fallen angels that left their first estate. What does that mean, leaving their first estate? We're going to look at that as well. And then the other theory of what demons are is that they are the spirits, certainly they are spirits, the Bible calls them unclean spirits, of the giants. And this will be fun because there are some Christians that do not believe in giants. But as we shall see, the Bible talks about a literal race of giants that existed in ancient times. So what are demons? Where do they come from? There are three theories, and we're going to take a look at each one of these theories of who exactly the demons are and what they do. So let's start a look at these, and let's start in the Bible. And let's find out what a demon or an unclean spirit is. Well, it is connected with fallen angels. And what are angels? Let's go to Hebrews. If you have a King James Bible, turn with me. If you don't, just listen. But uh, what we'd like is for you to be able to understand who the demons are. And if you are thinking of joining a satanic cult or entering into some kind of witchcraft or using a Ouija board, maybe you should double think and not do that after watching this video. Because demons have a purpose. And all they want to do is to torment people and to make fun of people. And their ultimate goal is to take people to hell with them. So Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 13, the Bible says, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit thou, or sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are not they, it says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So this verse is speaking of angels, and it says that angels are spirits. So one thing we know is that angels are spirits. So there are angels that are fallen angels, and these fallen angels, therefore, would be evil spirits. So there are good angels and bad angels. The good angels, I'll put over here, the good angels would, of course, be, let me write that, would be God's angels. The bad angels would be Satan's angels. And we will see in the Bible that even Satan has angels. He actually had some angels fall with him. We're going to find out who Satan is as well, because Satan is the devil. There's one devil, but he has many other devils that follow him. So, according to Hebrews 1.13 and 14, what are angels? Angels are spirits. So, in other words, angels are spirit beings. I don't have time to go into all the different passages in the Bible that talk about angels. But according to the Bible, angels can appear in the form of a man. 
Paul even said, the Apostle Paul, uh, that some of you have entertained angels unawares in the book of Hebrews. So angels are real, and they can appear and disappear, and somehow manifest themselves in a body that looks like a real body, but it's actually tangible that you can touch and feel. Well, you would think that these fallen angels then, therefore, could probably do the same thing. Now, fallen angels, what is this? The first theory of where demons come from is that demons are nothing more than the fallen angels. What are the fallen angels? Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. I kind of got a little ahead of myself in mentioning the devil's angels, but we're getting there. So, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 51. And I'm just going to show you some Bible verses, and we're going to try to use the Bible as our basis to find out where the demons come from. So, Matthew chapter 25 verse 41 says this. This is 25 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, and this is God speaking, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So, God has his angels that are ministering spirits that are good. And the bad angels are Satan's angels. Satan has angels. And the Bible says that his angels are cursed. So they're evil angels. Which, they may not even longer be angels. They're just demons. We'll get to that in a minute. So fallen angels. What are the fallen angels? Well, Satan definitely has his own angels. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. The Bible talks about the devil and his angels again. Revelation 12, 9. And it says... And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole earth. And how does he deceive the whole earth? Read the entire book of Revelation. You'll see that he has spirits that he sends out that are lying spirits that do lying wonders and signs. And he says, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So according to the Bible, Satan has angels. And who is Satan, by the way? Satan is, is also called the serpent. He's also called the dragon. So there are many names for Satan. He is Satan. He's called that old serpent. He's called the devil. And we're going to find out in a little bit. There's also another name of Satan. Satan had a name before he fell. And that name was different. And some people claim to worship him. And say that he is God. But the true God is Jesus Christ. So what is this? Who is Lucifer? And how did he get his angels? Well, let's try to draw this out over here. Here's Jesus Christ who died on the cross. So this is about 0 um, AD, I guess you could say. Well, way back here at the very beginning, the first man was, of course, Adam. So let's have this as the creation and Adam. Now, you don't believe in creation, that's fine. But this is what the Bible teaches. And we know that demons exist. There's no doubt about that. So if demons do exist, then that means the Bible must be true. So you want to deny demons? You want to deny the Bible? Help yourself. But there are demons in this world, and people have seen them and spoke to them. And they continue to work to deceive the world. But way back here around the time of creation, the Bible says that there was a man named Lucifer. Actually, he was a cherub, we're going to find out. And he fell from heaven with his angels. And so this is what we're going to read now in the Bible. And when Satan fell. And why he has with him angels that fell as well. Fallen angels. So let's go and look at this in Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. We're going to look at something. We're going to delve into a little bit about why Satanists worship an upside down star. Many people who claim to be Christians don't even know, or excuse me, claim to be Satanists, don't even know why they worship an upside down star. I remember as a kid going to a secular school, all the people talking about these rock groups like Motley Crue and ACDC. And you look at their album cover, there's always an inverted star pointing straight down. Why was that? Well, the Bible has the answer. We'll look at that in a minute. But Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 15, talks about Lucifer. It says, How art thou fallen? How art thou fallen? Lucifer fell from heaven, and he had angels that fell with him. Those are the fallen angels. Verse 12, Now art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? So another name for Satan is Lucifer. And Lucifer actually means the light bearer. And because of that, some people think, oh, you have to worship Lucifer because he's the true light. No, Jesus said he was the light. And we read in 2 Corinthians that Satan appears as an angel of light. Hmm. But he's not God. He's not the true angel. He's a fallen one who fell. So verse 12 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cast down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart. And what we're about to read is what happened back here when Satan fell, when Lucifer sat, fell. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend unto him. I will sit my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also above the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Satan became overcome with pride and said, you know what? I'm so awesome. I'm just going to kick God out and take over. And he tried. And what had happened? Verse 15, God speaking, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. We read the verse that says that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. It says, They that see thee shall nearly look upon thee and consider these things. Is that man, the man that made the earth to tremble and to shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroy the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? So the devil says, I will ascend, and I will do this, and I, and I, and God said, think, and kick them straight out of heaven. But there's a companion passage that talks about this, when Satan fell. Because this passage here is speaking about when and why the devil fell from heaven. It was because of pride he thought that he was more powerful than God, but he was a created being. 
Satan. Now he's more powerful than Satan. And Satan tried to rebel against God. And God kicked him out. Now we go to Ezekiel 28. In Ezekiel chapter 28, I'll begin reading at verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation of the king of Tyrus, and say to him, Thus saith the Lord, thou shalt see us, seal us up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now it begins to address the devil, which was inside this king of Tyrus. And we know it has to be the devil, because it mentions a place that was in the beginning, Eden. And it says of the devil, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, speaking to Lucifer. And it gives it the, the stones, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. It's interesting that he has pipes in him. These aren't pipes like plumbing pipes. These are pipes that were used like we see in, in gigantic organs. The devil has lots of music. He loves to make music, hence rock and roll. And most people who claim to be rock and roll stars, how do they say they got their start? You sit down and talk to them, they'll tell you, well, I sold my soul to the devil. So many of them, it's such a common thing in the, in the music industry, in hip-hop, all these different uh, uh, TV, uh, movie stars, they all say, well, I, I got my start because I sold my soul to the devil. Interesting. Verse 14, speaking about Lucifer, it says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and, and have set thee so, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, thou hast walked up and down with it in the stone of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created. Uh, and it says, till iniquity was found in thee. So what happened? Well, Satan thought, I am so perfect and I'm so great, I'm just going to kick God out and take this whole thing over. And God said, no, think, and kicked him, kick him out. It says, by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. God says, you're out of here, Lucifer. Now your name is Satan. <laughs> and I will cast thee to the ground, I will lay thee before kings, that they may be holy. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries, by the multitude of thine iniquities, and by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, will I bring forth... Um, I will bring thee to ashes. Break forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all men and all them that behold thee. So here we have the devil thinking he's so great. And look at what the Bible says. <clears throat> the Bible called him the anointed cherub that covered. Now, if you look at the Bible and you look at some interesting um, history, you'll find out that in the Bible, God was seated on the throne. And God had cherubims or cherubs that sat around him. And we know one of the cherubs' names is Gabriel. We also know there's one in the Bible called Michael, Michael the Archangel. Now, we don't know the names of the other two cherubs that are sitting at the throne of God. Some say, Jewish tradition says, there's one named Uriel and one named Raphael. Who knows? But the Bible said that Lucifer was the anointed cherub that covered him. So he sat up here. And he said, you know what? I'm perfect and I'm so great. And iniquity was found in him because he thought, well, I'm already sitting up here anyway, higher than God. I might as well just kick God out. And God said, no, you won't. And he cast him down. And look what happened. See how this makes a star pointing up? Well, when Lucifer fell, what you have is that star falling down. Now Lucifer is Satan, the anointed chair of the cover. And look what you have. You have an inverted star. This is why all Satanists love an upside-down star. Because it commemorates the falling. And they all want to fall with Lucifer as the, his angel. And they all want to be the wicked and the rebellious and the evil one. And many of them don't even know why they worship an upside-down star. Many of them put a little goat in here, the goat of Mendez or whatever. But that upside-down star comes from the Bible, from the teaching that Lucifer was the anointed cherub. I got to write up here, anointed. Lucifer was the anointed cherub that sat up here. But because he thought he was more powerful than God and could kick God out, he tried and rebelled. And he deceived the angels to fall with him. Some of the angels fell with him, and they all fell headlong down into the earth. So that's what we see is who Lucifer is, where he came from. We know that some angels fell with him. So the first theory of who devils are is that they are the angels that fell with Satan, Lucifer. And they then degraded down and changed into horrible, scary-looking spiritual beings who wander the earth. And that's what some people believe. When you ask them, who are demons, where do they come from? They say, well, they're just the fallen angels that fell with Satan. Well, does that mean Satan is a demon? Well, clearly he's the devil, and he has many devils. I don't know if I'd go so far as to call Satan a demon, but the Bible does call him an angel of light. So this is who Satan is, where he came from, and these are the fallen angels. And many people today say, oh, demons? Yeah, yeah, they're just the fallen angels. That's theory number one. Now, there's a different theory. <clears throat> there's another theory. And to find this theory, we need to find the uh, Jude, chapter 1, and verse 6. Jude, which is right before the book of Revelation, chapter 1, and verse 6. And in Jude 1, 6, it says, <clears throat> And the angels, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great God. The angels which kept not their first estate. Well, here we read of angels that were fallen angels who not just fell with Satan way back here, but when they fell, they left their first estate. What does that mean, leaving their first estate? What, what is that talking about? Well, <clears throat> as you know, Hollywood seems to be run by a lot of Satanists. There are a lot of movies and evil in Hollywood. 
and I've heard, and I've even watched a lot of YouTube videos about how much Satanism covers Hollywood. But there was a movie years ago called City of Angels. You may or may not have seen it. And it was about an angel who just decided, you know what, I'm going to fall. And that angel fell. He left his first estate. But when that angel fell, he fell in love with a woman. And he mated with that woman. You say, oh, that could never happen. We're going to see something in the Bible that, that, that mentions something very interesting and similar to that. So the fallen angels that left their first estate. And in that movie, he just decided, I'm going to fall. So he just fell off a big building. And when he fell, he boom, hit the ground and blood was running out. And he became a human being, I guess, according to that movie. Well, what is this leaving your first estate? There's some people that theorize that the fact that they left their first estate meant the way they took on a body like a human body was they had to have drink, uh, had to drink blood. In Leviticus 17.11, we're told, The life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you upon the altar for the blood that make atonement for the soul. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So for these fallen angels to fall <clears throat> and take on a body like you and I have, they would have had to drink in blood. This is a theory that many people have of who the fallen angels, excuse me, who the demons are. They would have been fallen angels that decided to leave their first estate, which means they decided to leave having a spirit body, and they wanted a real body. And by drinking blood, that body that they could form into became a body like yours and mine. You say, that's a little far fetched. Well, <clears throat> let's look at some more things. Before we do, let's look at 1 Peter 3 21. We'll get back to this. Because the Bible has a lot to say about fallen angels. And in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21, the Bible tells us this. I can find it. 1 Peter 3 21. <clears throat> I wrote 1 Peter 3 21, and I meant to write 1 Peter 3 19. So let's go to 1 Peter 3 19. And 1 Peter 3 19 says, By which also he, in verse 18 is speaking of Jesus Christ, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was in preparing. So we have some spirits here, and over here we have a man named Noah that lived on our little timeline here. And in the time of Noah, there was a gigantic flood that destroyed the earth. And the Bible tells us that these spirits, these fallen angels, were taken during that time of the flood, and they were put down into the earth in what the Greek people called Tartarus. Tartarus. It was a place in the earth in which they were chained up in chains. That's supposed to be some chains. I'm not a good artist. And the Bible tells us that there are some beings that are now in spirits, in prison. They're in prison now in the heart of the earth. Who are these beings? They were fallen angels. That at the flood, God took and imprisoned in the heart of the earth. We find that in 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. So this is why I told you it was a wild Bible study. But I believe the Bible and this is in the Bible. And if you want to know who demons are and where they come from, go to the source. Go to the book that God wrote and find out. So in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4, it says, For God spared not the angels, well, here they are, the angels, that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to reserve or to judgment. And the verse 5 says, Spared not the old world and saved Noah. This imprisoning of these evil spirits, these fallen angels, was always in connection with Noah's flood, because during the flood of Noah is when God took these and imprisoned them. And we will see that in a minute. So these fallen angels are in prison in chains now. So how could these fallen angels up here, how could they be demons? If they're not even here on the earth, they're in prison down here. So this other theory is starting to look a little bit better. What is the second theory? What is that? Well, at first, we need to look at something else. Well, no, no, no. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6, and we'll tie this all together. Genesis chapter 6. In Genesis chapter 6, we're told an interesting story. A story which is so far-fetched that many people who claim to be Christians today just can't accept it, because I just cannot believe this story. Well, I'm a Christian, and I'm a Bible believer, so I believe it. And it's sad to me that other people claim to be Christians, but they don't want to believe what the Bible teaches. But let's read Genesis chapter 6, starting verse 1, and read down to about verse 6. It says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, this would have been back here on our timeline before Noah, before the gigantic flood, that men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. And it says, That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Who are the sons of God? We're going to look at that in a minute, because in the Old Testament, every time you see sons of God show up, it's a reference to angels. Well, it's always a reference to these good angels. But we also see the devil showing up whenever the sons of God showed up and appeared to God. Now, in the New Testament, the sons of God applies to Christians. But every time the word sons of God appear in the Old Testament, it's always in reference to the angels. So it says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh, and his day shall be 120 years. And 120 years exactly later was the flood of Noah. Now, I don't remember if I read all of verse 2, so let me go back to verse 2. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and that they took them wives of all which they chose. This verse is telling us that these fallen angels, these sons of God that fell, they took them wives of men. So these spirit beings took on the body of flesh and found women, and came into those women. Kind of like the City of Angels movie. Now look at verse 4. 
verse 4 says, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also, after that, after what? After the flood. So, there were giants before the flood. And there were also giants after the flood, after that. And we will see them in the Bible. The Bible tells us about the giants after the flood. And it says, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Do you see what that verse just said? I mean, I'm in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, and it says um, in verse uh, 4, excuse me, that the sons of God, these fallen angels, came into the daughters of women, had sex with them, the daughters of men, which would be women, and bare children to them. That means angels had to leave their first estate, take on a body. And how did they take that body? Most likely they had to drink blood. But they took that body and they mated with women, and they produced an offspring, according to the Bible. I told you this was wild. And that offspring was a race of giants. And we will see in a minute those giants had six fingers and six toes. Hmm. Who are these giants? How did this even take place? There's some people that just say it's so far fetched I can't believe it when they claim to be Christian. I believe it. There's an excellent book by Stephen Quayle. If you don't have this, you need to get it. It's called Giants. And Stephen Quayle goes through and he shows you documented accounts of skeletons that have been found. The biggest one, 36 feet high. That looks like a giant to me. He goes through and he shows modern pictures of giants. He gives accounts of all the way back in Rome and in America. And pictures of, of giants that were found. Here's a picture of a giant that was found in London in the year 1800 and something. And notice, if you look closely at that giant, look how tall he is. He is about 12 feet, 2 inches tall. And he has 6 fingers and 6 toes. So I guess the Bible is true. The Bible says that these, these fallen angels left their false estate, their first estate. They made it with daughters of men and produced giants that had six fingers and six toes. And Stephen Quayle does an excellent job of showing that there are even giants alive today. All different kind of pictures that you can get and look at. This is an amazing book. If you don't have it, look it up. Stephen Quayle, Genesis 6, Giants. The front page just shows you. Here's a man, 1800s, posing next to two giants over in the Middle East. Quite interesting, quite interesting. So, did it really happen like the Bible says? I believe so. I believe so. So, Genesis 6 tells us that... The sons of God, these fallen angels, came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old. And it says, men of renown. And God saw, verse 5, that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And that is why God sent the flood of Noah, was to destroy these horrible beings, these giants. And because of men mating with the fallen angels, women with the fallen angels. So, <clears throat> these angels fell. Now let's get back to this. Um, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 20. There are, are a lot of people that believe in vampires. And you know, there very well could have been vampires in the world. But for them to really truly exist, they would have to have been those fallen angels. And most likely for them to fall and take on a body that was capable of producing offspring, they would have had to drink in blood. So all these old stories, how about old mythology? In old mythology from Greece and Egypt, the gods came down in the form of men. Who would that have been? That would have been the fallen angels. And in all those old mythology teachings, the gods were just horrible fornicators. And they would fornicate with all these other people. Well, that makes sense. The Bible talks about these giants and these fallen angels that would have come down. And who would they have been? Why, they could have truly existed, as the Bible teaches, and been the gods of ancient mythology. And what were they? They were fallen angels that were coming to do evil things. And they produced giants. Hercules, a giant. Now, to get into that state, in order to be able to have a body that could produce a, a man-child, they most likely had to drink, drink blood. Why? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. Those angels wouldn't have had human blood. So there's your vampire myth, your vampire stories, tying back into that. And what's interesting is, they would have eventually died. We're going to look at some verses on that. And if they died, they would have been remembered by statues or idols. And as we look throughout history, it cannot be denied that people would come to idols and offer blood sacrifices. Why do they offer blood sacrifice to idols? Could it be because those idols commemorated those fallen angels that demanded blood and they had to drink blood in order to stay alive? Makes sense to me. Let's look at a couple Bible verses in 1 Corinthians 10 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 20, it says, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. Blood sacrifice to demons, to devils. And it says in verse 20, And not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. So devils are connected with sacrifice, and that sacrifice is to idols, to evil idols. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 17 ties this all together very nicely. In Deuteronomy 32, 17, it tells us that when they sacrifice the devils, who are they truly sacrificing to? Deuteronomy 32, 17. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 17 says, They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up whom their fathers feared not. So these fallen angels that left their first estate, these idols are gods. 
Well, in ancient mythology, it ties in perfectly with the King James Bible account that there were ancients that came along and said, we're gods, worship us, and we want blood. Give us blood sacrifice. And these ancient gods became immortal almost. They could be killed. Hollywood is remaking many movies about Greek mythology today. Don't run over, they're re recounting this ancient mythology. But it does have history and truth in the Bible if these ancient gods were those fallen angels that left their first estate. That means not only did they fall with Satan, but then they fell to the earth and drank blood, become in the form of a human body in which they could take and mate with the daughters of men. You said, that's really far-fetched, I can't believe that. You don't have to believe it, but the Bible says it. So, <laughs> there's a history of idol worship and giving blood sacrifice to idols. Why? Let's look at Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 4. The Bible holds the answer, and the Bible tells us why this is. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 4. In Leviticus 19.4 it says, Turn ye not into idols, nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. So once again, Leviticus 19.4 identifies these false idols of the old days are the gods. And who are the gods? They are these angels that left their first estate, who became the gods of ancient mythology, who had offspring like Hercules, giants, men of stature, men of renown. Look at Psalms chapter 96 and verse 5. In Psalm chapter 96 and verse 5, we learn that when these beings, these fallen angels, left their first estate and chose to mate with the daughters of men, most likely by drinking blood, then they became mortal and they could die. And Psalm 96 and verse 5 says, For all the gods of the nations are idols. Once again, the Bible says the nation's gods, mythology calls them their gods, are idols. They demand blood sacrifice. Why? Because most likely those gods, when they fell, demanded to drink blood so they could have a body with a blood circulatory system like ours so they can mate with the daughters of men. So Psalms 96 5 says, For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heaven, heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Now verse 4, Psalms 96 and verse 4, For the Lord is great, but greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. So there is one true God, and that is Jesus Christ. That's God, who actually loved us enough that he didn't demand a blood sacrifice of men. He came down in the form of a man and gave his own blood to save us. What a loving, caring, wonderful God. So, what does the Bible say? It says that these idols are gods, and if you look at mythology, it lines up with the Bible. These fallen angels that left their first estate would have been the gods of the ancient mythology. Makes sense to me. So, what happens? Well, they claim to be gods. And look what happened. Let's go to Psalms chapter 82. I meant to turn to this verse. I didn't want to forget that other one that I've written down. So let's go to Psalms. Turn to Psalms 82. Verse 6 and 7, and it tells us that when these angels fell and left their first estate, most likely by drinking blood, their body became a body that was capable of death. In Psalms 82 and verse 6, Psalms 82, 6 and 7, God is speaking and says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Well, they were sons of God, these fallen angels, they were angels which were sons of God. So they were the children of the Most High, who rebelled against God and fell. And then they rebelled even more by leaving their first estate to become mortal like me. And what does God say to these people? He said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the most high, verse 7, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So they became mortal and capable of death. So, second theory, where do the fallen, uh, where do demons come from? What if they are the disembodied spirits of the fallen angels that left their first estate? That means there would be two classes of fallen angels. There's those angels that fell with Satan, and they're still with him that have never drank in blood and, and made it with the daughters of men. But they, the Bible says, were chained up down here. So then there came other fallen angels after that, after the flood, that did mate with the daughters of men. And guess what? When they died, because eventually they would have died, then they've got a spirit inside them going around the earth looking for another body, looking for a place to live. And that would explain who demons are, the disembodied spirits of the fallen angels who left the first estate. Some people believe that. And that's an interesting thought, and that's most certainly possible. Let me look at uh, Deuteronomy 8, 19 real quick, and then we'll get to the third theory, which makes even more sense than the other two. Who are demons? Where do they come from? Well, we do know they exist. We know that much. And we know they're evil. We know we need to stay away from them. Who exactly they are isn't exactly that important. But we need to, do, do need to look at the idea of who they are and where they come from. Deuteronomy 8.19 says, And it shall be, this is a warning from God to Israel, And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall you perish, because you would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. God chose Israel as his own nation. And he said, Tell the whole world that I am the God. And Israel put forth the Ten Commandments, the law of God, for the whole world to know. And all these other nations had all these other gods and all these idols. They practiced blood sacrifice. Whether they knew it or not, they were serving Satan and worshiping fallen angels and worshiping demons. 
But God says, no, 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 you don't do like the heathen do. You don't do like the nations do. You worship the one true God, the right God. So don't worship them. So what you get out of that verse is that when you are worshiping an idol, you're worshiping a demon. When you are worshiping a false god, you're not just worshiping some made-up thing. You're worshiping a fallen angel who left his first estate. Well, now, the demon is a wandering spirit without a body. He's going around the earth. He once had a body, and now he wants another one. And in the Bible, we read of demonic possession, in which demons can come inside of someone and be inside of that person. And all throughout the Bible, it talks about when that happens, one of their goal is to torment people. They love to torment people. Well, the book of Enoch, I don't know if you've ever read it, and I don't condone the book of Enoch. I only go with the scripture, the King James Bible. That's my final authority, King James 1611. So even though it's interesting that this book says this, I'm not going to take it because that book says so. But the book of Enoch says the third uh, theory of where demons come from. And interestingly enough, this theory has been believed by the Jews since the very beginning. So this could be the right one. But because the Bible doesn't specifically tell us, all we know is there's three different theories of where they come from. But according to the book of Enoch, the spirits of the giants are the demons. So when these fallen angels left their first estate, they produced the offspring of giants. And those giants went around the earth. But those giants died. And so that verse that says, you say you're a god, but you shall die as men, could be applying to these giants, these giant beings, which we'll see in a minute, have six fingers and six toes. And when these giants died, that spirit that was in them went around somewhere looking for a body to possess. Because it had a body before, and now it wants another one. Uh, many famous people who claim to use channeling and talking to spirits, when you ask them, what's the name of your spirit? They say, well, the name of my spirit is so-and-so. And you look in the Bible, that's the name of one of the giants. Uh, Edgar Casey had a famous spirit guide. And you look at the name of that, and it was like, wow, that name's in the Bible, and it applies to one of the giants. So this theory has more evidence to prove that it's cross possibly true. The book of Enoch says that before the flood, there were four main fallen angels that fell. And interestingly enough, the Bible tells us, and by the way, we looked at those angels, were put into chains of darkness. But in the book of Revelation, we find out that one day these four angels are going to be let loose. Let's go to Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9. And I don't want to speak where the King James Bible doesn't speak. I only believe the King James Bible. So some of this is speculation not to be taken as doctrine. But if the Bible does say it, that we can take as doctrine. So in Revelation chapter 9, verse 14, it says, Saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. Now, who are these four angels? That's talking about out here in the tribulation period. And in that tribulation period, when the world goes through the wrath of God before Armageddon, God's going to let these four angels that are locked up under the earth come out and slay the third part of men. Well, who are these four angels? The Bible doesn't tell us. But only one book does, the book of Enoch. And it says those are the four main leaders of the fallen angels that God locked up before the flood. It could be. Once again, I'm not teaching that as doctrine because that's not King James Bible. The King James Bible mentions these four angels coming out. I believe there's four angels coming out. Don't know who they are. But it's possible they could be those that the book of Enoch mentions. So, many people think that the fallen angels are the demons. Others believe that the fallen angels are the the demons, excuse me, are the fallen angels that left their first estate that actually mated with the daughters of men and when then they died, their spirits went out through the earth and they are the demons. And yet others believe that the giants were the demons. And if you think about it, up comes a woman and a woman has three parts and here's an angel. An angel has two parts. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.23 that every man and woman in this world has a body, a soul, and a spirit. Now we saw that angels don't have souls. They are spirit beings and yet they can take the form of a human body. And I guess by drinking blood, they could actually become a body that can mate with men. So what happens if these two things come together and mate? What it would produce would be a body from the mother and a spirit from the angel, and it'd be a creature that has a body and a spirit but no soul. And so when the body dies, by the way, this is what they produced, was one of the giants. So when the, the sons of God, the, the fallen angels mated with the daughters of men, a being with a, a spirit and a body, with, a, with another being with a body, soul, and spirit, produced a giant that was a body and a spirit. And when his body was killed or died, then that spirit was loosed, and because there was no soul in that, because your soul either goes to heaven or hell when you die, that soul was left on the earth, wandering around, looking for a place to go. And that's what makes sense, is most likely what the demons are, is they are the spirits of a disembodied, they are the disembodied spirits of the giants when the giants died. Let's look at some of these giants in the Bible. I think I passed right by that, I did. Giants after the flood. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1. There are so many verses that talk about giants that it isn't impossible. It's impossible for a person to be a Christian and say, no, there's no such thing as giants. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 28. And in Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 28, 
It says, Whither shall we go up, our brother? Or whither shall we go up? Our brother have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven, and moreover we have seen the sons of the Anakims. The Anakims. In the Bible, there is a tribe called the Anakims, which is a tribe of giants. And what's weird is the book of Anak says that Anak was one of the four angels that went down into the earth and was imprisoned. We don't know if that's true or not, but we do know that the Bible mentions Anak. And the Anakims were the sons of the giants. Let's look at some more verses on this. Uh, let's go to 2 and verse 10 in the book of Deuteronomy. The Imams dwelt there in the time past, the people great and many and tall as the Anakims. Tall. Giants are tall. Which also were counted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites called them Imams. So this is after the flood. And you remember that there were giants in the land before the flood. And then it says, and also after that. And we find that the Jews were the ones that killed out and destroyed these giants. Let's look at that. Verse 20. It also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in the old time, and the Ammonites called them Zamum, Zamzumims. A great a people great and many and tall as the Anakims, but the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. And it says, And as did the children of Esau which dwelt in Seir when they destroyed the Harams from before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead even unto this day. And the Abams which dwelt in Hazariah, even to Azza, and the Ketorams which went forth under the Ketor, destroyed them and dwelt in their stead. The Bible gives us a list of races of giants that dwelt on this earth that were destroyed by different nations. So, when the Bible says the sons of God left their first estate, mated with the daughters of men, and produced giants, I'm inclined to agree. Especially when the Bible tells us the name of the giants. They're called Anakims. Others called them Emims. Uh, the Ammonites called them Zamzumzims. Zamzumzims. Um, the, the, the people in Seir called them the Horims. They're also called Abims and Kephorims. So the Bible mentions these giants, and it tells you they were named by the people in the area and they were destroyed think about it, the old stories of, of men killing giants oh that's only in mythology uh, except for the fact that it actually took place according to the bible deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 2 well, verse 1 hear o israel thou art to pass over jordan this day and to go in to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself cities great and fenced up to heaven a great people and tall children of the anakims whom thou knowest and of whom thou hast heard who can stand before the children of anak and we read how god used the, uh, moses and Joshua, and they went in and possessed the land, and they killed the giants. We're going to look at some more verses. Joshua chapter 11. Because Joshua didn't kill all the giants, and there were actually some left till the day of David. Joshua chapter 11, verse 21. By the way, many, 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 many bones of giants have been found in the world today. The History Channel, I believe it is, or maybe it's Nat Geo, is actually showing uh, something about giants. And these two guys that are stonemasons that are traveling all over the world trying to find the bones of giants, and they found finger bones. Well, the Smithsonian, all throughout the history of America, has found bones of giants. And according to some, they're hiding them because they don't fit with the theory of evolution. So they're taking these giant bones, and they're either destroying them or hiding them deep in the basement, like the Indiana Jones warehouse, so people can't see them. So many people say, where is the evidence of giants? Well, it's been hidden from us. Do well, we really need the evidence when the Bible tells us it's true? And we have evidence in great books like this one from Stephen Quayle. And look through history and reading the accounts of history. In Joshua chapter 11, verse 21, it says, And at that time came Joshua and cut off the Anakims, which were the giants, from the mountains, from Hebron, from Deborah, from Anak, and from the mountains of Judah, and from all the mountains of Israel. Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. And there was none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel. So Israel destroyed all the giants out of their land. But then it says, P.S., only in the Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod there remain. So three places were left the giants that Joshua never destroyed. Gath, Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod. Guess what? Gath. There's a famous man in the time of David that the Bible tells us that David killed who was a giant. And who was that? Goliath from Gath. And here we find the history in the Bible that when Joshua destroyed all the giants, he didn't get destroyed all the ones in Gath. And so we find out later in the time of David from Gath comes one called Goliath. But what does the Bible say about him? Well, let's look it up. First Samuel chapter 17. I don't understand how a person can say, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe in giants. They must not be reading the Bible. The Bible is mentioning giants everywhere. We're finding them in Scripture, passage after passage after passage. First Samuel chapter 17, and verse 4. Look what it says. And there went out, well, verse 3. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And verse 4. And there went out a champion among the camp of the Philistines, a champion named Goliath of Gath. Boy, that's the place the Bible said that Joshua didn't get to kill the giants. And it says, whose height was six cubits and a span. A lot of people say that's nine, ten foot tall. I don't know. It says he had a helmet of brass on his head. And he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. You know how tall you have to be to be carrying around armor that weighed 5,000 shekels of brass? And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and the target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a wavered beam. And his spear weighed 600 shekels of iron. 
and one bearing a shield went before him. 600 shekels of iron. Imagine that is how long his spear was. More of the Bible tells us about this giant of Gath in 2 Samuel chapter 21. He said, I thought we are talking about David. Why are we going into giants? It all ties together. 2 Samuel 21, 20. In Samuel 21, 20, it says, And there was yet a battle in Gath, and there was a man of great stature. And he had on every hand six fingers, and on every hand six toes, four and twenty in number. And he, had also, he was, and he also was born to the giant. And when he had to follow these rules, yada, yada, yada. These four were born in, to the giant in Gath. So the Bible tells us that in Gath there was a giant named Goliath, and David slew him. But it also says there was four other giants. These were the four brothers of Goliath. And interestingly enough, as you read the Bible, it's plain to see that when David went out and slew Goliath, the Bible says first that he picked up five stones. One of those five stones was used to kill Goliath. What were the other four for? Oh, David was thinking big. You know, I'm going to kill Goliath with this one, and those other four are coming after you. Interesting. So, in 2 Samuel 21, 22, these four were born to Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. So, we find that the Bible talks about giants. Who were these giants? Without a doubt, there were angels that fell from heaven with Satan. Well, some of those fallen angels left their first estate, most likely by drinking blood. And they took on a body in which they could produce giants because they had offspring when they mated with the daughters of men. Just like the ancient mythology of old Zeus and Apollo and all these Aphrodite, and they were all incestuous and they all slept with each other because all they did was fornicate. Well, these could have died and they could have been the demons that wanted the earth. But it makes more sense that their children, the giants, are where demons come from. And that those giants, when they died, their spirit was left on the earth because there was no soul inside to go to heaven or hell. And so they wandered the earth looking for a body. Because they once had a body, they once, once were men of renown, well-known, powerful, and then they were nothing. So who are the demons? Those are the three theories. You'll have to decide for yourself. But are demons real? Of course they are. Are giants real? Of course they are. I've had dealings with demons over the years. Um, first of all, when I was a young child, I knew people that used to play with a Ouija board, and they tell me about their experiences playing with a Ouija board and how they could lift things with their finger, and all these things where demons were working in the spirit world. Stay away from that kind of stuff. One time I was on a bus, and I, I was unlucky enough to sit next to a woman who smelled, just reeked of beer so bad, and didn't care how she looked. And she began to talk to me, and I was a Christian, and I tried to witness to her. And the first thing she said was, you're weird. She said, I see you, and all I see is this purple aura around you. And she said, that means royalty. And I said, ma'am, I don't know who you are or what you believe, but I'm a Christian. I have the Holy Spirit of God inside me. And she just went, you're right. That's what it is. That's... She said, let me tell you about my experience with demons. For the next couple hours, I sat next to this lady on a bus, hearing stuff that I didn't really want to hear about. But she said that she remembered a time in her life when a demon came into her. And she said she remembers feeling a feeling of just utter and complete evil. Just it was a feeling just overwhelmed evil and wanting to do evil and hurt others. And these things exist. Was well, she possessed? Probably. She had her boyfriend there, and she said her boyfriend was tormented and was rolling on the floor and being hurt by these spirit beings. I've heard other stories. I've heard about Satanists who talk to demons. As a matter of fact, one told me that many demons like to be called Jesus. Isn't that awful? Why is that? When Jesus was on earth, he was on earth, and they ran to him, and they said, Torment us not before our time. Cast us not out. What did Jesus do? He said, Don't tell people about him. He said, I've got a purpose. I came here to die for the sins of the world because I am the true God. And even the demons recognize that. So if you're thinking about joining a, a satanic church, if you're thinking about learning witchcraft and becoming a witch, or if you're thinking of playing with Ouija board, be warned. Be warned. God is the only true God. And heaven or hell is the only place you'll go when you die. And Jesus came and died for your sins to save you. You don't need to be messing with these things. Their place is hell. The Bible says that hell is prepared for the devil and his angels. And the only good light they'll have for all eternity is seeing the people burning in hell with them that they took with them because they deceived them. Witchcraft is real. But is it worth your mortal soul? No, it's not. No, it's not. So where do demons come from? Some people think, well, the demons are just the fallen angels because these are spirits. And that demons are unclean spirits. That's possible. But most of these fallen angels are down here, locked up. And in the future, and I didn't read it in the book of Revelation, it says that Satan one time in the future will even draw more angels down with him. A third of the angels. But they're going to be defeated. And Jesus Christ is going to come out victorious. Are the demons and the fallen angels left their first estate and then when they died as men, they wander the earth? That could be right as well as this one. It could be both. Or are the demons the spirits of the giants? That when the giants died, the men of renown, now they wander the earth looking for a place to, to dwell. And Jesus talked about them as they come together. They go in groups. And when they are cast out, they come back with seven other spirits more powerful than they. And a person that's possessed by a demon is a person that is deceived and tormented. You might think being a witch is fun and casting spells is fun, but it's not. The ultimate goal of these beings is to torment you in hell. But you can't be liberated, you can't be free. A, demon, uh, a, a Satanist told me one time there's one thing that demons hate, 
And that if you mention this one thing, the demons will flee and run as fast as they can because they hate hearing about this right here. What is it the thing the demons hate? The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. As I noted earlier, Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross of Calvary as the atonement for all sin, past, present, and future. And if you come to Jesus Christ and trust the gospel, which is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, I encourage you, get a Bible. Look up 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, what Jesus did for you. Because he did all that to save you. And if you'll come to Jesus and trust his blood, you can be free from these horrible, awful beings. So I hope this was a message that was encouraging. I hope you learned something. If you're a Christian, know your enemy. If you're not a Christian, I pray you come to Jesus Christ and be saved. Please stay away from these beings because they don't want you to excel and to be happy. They're not there for your welfare and betterment. They're there with the ultimate goal of taking you to hell to torment you for all eternity. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Until next time, I'm Robert Breaker, cloudchurch.org.